You are serving a God who changes situations. You are not a right of You are not a failure. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Victory is yours on earth today. By spiritual death, you are qualified for a life of much work. So what you say is what you make. If you speak grace, you experience grace. You speak disaster, you experience disaster. You speak do, you experience doom. You speak love, you receive love. So what you express is what you experience. There are a lot of sacrifices people are making that are meaningless sacrifices because there is no salt in it. But it's not enough to give it. How you give it matters to God. If you give money in church because you are waiting to be acknowledged, like look at him. Hey, they are the ones that give money in church. Heavy duty. You are wasting your giving. Whatever you give with the wrong motive does not give you life. It kills you. Praise the Lord. Chris O'Hare here again. And uh, it's a joy always to come your way on this platform. New experience. Last week we began to look at a topic of titled Ruling by Influence. And the words of Jesus, those awesome words that Jesus spoke out in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 and 14 where he said, ye are the salt of the earth. And then he said, ye are the light of the world. We took salt and began to expand on the qualities and the characters of salt as it relates with the character of the believer, which is you and I. I am so glad that we were able to share time together last week. And today we are delving a bit deeper into this subject of being the salt of the earth. When Christ talked about salt, he meant influence. When salt gets into any environment, like your soup for instance, a little pinch of salt can make all the difference. The environment changes entirely. The taste changes. We also saw that salt is one of the most effective preservatives on the face of the earth. There are many other uses for salt, but these are the two basic things. As a preservative and as a, a, a taste giver, if you like, a seasoner. Now today we are going to get into a dimension of this teaching, which I believe is going to position you in every aspect of your life to be the best you can be, because that is God's will for you. When you are offering your sacrifices to God, God requires that your sacrifices are sold. Now, in the New Testament, we don't offer animal sacrifices like they used to do in the Old Testament because Jesus has paid the ultimate price. The Bible says his sacrifice, which he made, is once and for all. So we don't kill goats, we don't kill chicken and all of that. But Jesus did that for us. However, we can offer the sacrifices of our service to God and to humanity. And while we are doing it, the Lord said, mix your sacrifice with salt. In other words, let the sacrifice be so potent, so powerful, that it's influential. It influences people for good, and it's so preserved that it will outlast all the challenges that may come against it. In this particular episode, we are going to look into that and see how we can solve our sacrifices. Let's join the service in progress. I'll be back to pray with you at the end of this service and I'm believing God that wherever you stand, you will rule by the influence of salt that is on your inside. See you very shortly. Some people can live in the house for three weeks. They won't sweep it one day. Say, well, I'm serving God with my heart. And hosting devils with your body. Huh? God is concerned with details. If you sing in the church and you don't care about voice training and you don't improve the skill with which you are singing, God will not accept your sacrifice because he knows you ought to be better. 
He said, no, it's God now. You see, he, said, he said that, the Bible says that God does not look at the outward. He looks at the heart. So even if I'm croaking like a frog, ah, ah, it's the heart. God knows what I mean. If you want to croak, get out of the choir. The choir is not for people who are croaking. The choir is for people who are singing with skill. You must be interested in improving your skill as a singer, improving your skill as an instrumentalist. The Bible tells us that David praised God on the instruments with skill. David was the best harpist in Israel. Praise the name of Jesus. We must pursue excellence. We must, we must serve him with the art of the perfumer. Not just what I want, what God wants. So if you are going to give it to God, it must be according to the act of the perfumer. If you are going to preach, you are called to a pulpit ministry, you must settle down to learn. It's not you bring two scriptures together, hey, put this one, put this one here. The, the anointing will come on it. The anointing will come on it. it, it once I just say it like this, the anointing will just come. And zzz, things will just happen. God will not accept that kind of sacrifice. You must settle down, organize your thoughts, so when you are speaking to people, it will make sense. It's easier for people to decide when the thoughts are organized. Amen? In preaching to people, to winning souls to Christ, the Lord has even made it easy for us. You know why? He said, tell your story. Because you don't have to go to school to tell your story. Everyone here knows their story. Tell, simple. Tell your story. It's the most powerful message you can share on earth. Just tell your story. Paul the Apostle stood before kings and told his story. I used to wonder what relevance does this have with the question Paul was asked. They are telling you that the Israelites have accused you, you are going to jail, and you are saying, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. <laughs> What's the connection? And then the Lord said, he is telling his story. That's what I told you to do. You will probably get more results if you learn to tell your own story. When Paul spoke about how he had the encounter on the way to Damascus, how the light flashed, to an unbelieving governor. How a voice spoke to him, to someone who doesn't believe in such. The Bible says the man became convicted. He said, Paul. And of course he misinterpreted it. He said, too much knowledge has made you mad. You have almost convinced me to be a Christian. Paul said, not only you, but everyone that is listening to me, my desire is for all of them to be like me, except for these chains. You know, that was have what I have, but not these chains. What, what a masterpiece. Go and tell your story. I was sick, now I'm healed. Jesus did it. He can do the same for you. I can assure you that testimony will carry the anointing. Your story is already anointed. You don't need extra, extra embellishment. Just tell it, the anointing is on, on it. The same anointing that produced the story is always on the story. Praise the name of Jesus. When we do that, then our sacrifice is salty. You see, people are doing a lot of things that God is not smelling. Or this, God is trying to perceive and is odoriferous. Repugnant, rejectionable. You may be present every day, but what is the quality of your input? It's not enough to throw ingredients together in a bizarre way. They are not properly measured, they are not well compounded, they are not well presented, and then you expect God to accept every rubbish? No, not the God I know. Whatever we do must secure God's approval and must be accepted. According to the art of the perfumer. It must be well balanced. It must be presented in a way that achieves excellence. When people see it, they will know that ah, there is something different to these people. Because God's standard is, is drawing from us our best. When preparing what you are going to share, don't share junk. You are a map leader. And then you don't, you don't take time to go through the notes and you just show up in the meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All my members. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh, what is the topic today? 
You are the leader that is supposed to be leading. You are asking what's the topic. Your sacrifice is 50 miles away. Unacceptable. You must settle down and apply yourself to what you are doing. Amen? This is what we must do to rule in the midst of our enemies. All the nations in the world came to Israel. You know why they came? Because they saw their temple. Solid gold. And they saw the order with which they worship God. And the excitement. And there of course the, the outfall of all of that was abundance, wealth, surplusity. When we do this to God, you don't lack money. When you are running after money, money will be running away from you. But when you follow God with your heart, you begin to command money. Many Christians are suffering unnecessarily because they are putting the cart before the horse. When you put God first, you become first. Amen? Let me conclude with this. Just imagine as a believer, you are functioning in your office. Because you know your office is a ministry. Even if you are not working for yourself, you are working for someone else. That service is a ministry. You must take it like a ministry. Because when you salt that sacrifice and give it your best, with the art of the perfumer, your quality begins to attract attention. Just imagine, if they need something done, you do it properly and with an extra touch. Say, ah, I didn't think of, about that. You know what happens? You are salting that office. Anytime they need answers, they say, let's ask that man. Before you know it, everybody will be calling you, that, let's ask that brother. Before you know it, even those who are not, we say, us Christians, us Christians, they'll come and borrow ideas from you and lay claim to it. And it won't bother you. Because where it is coming from, it never runs dry. You become the salt in that office. You are advancing a quality that is by itself evangelistic. When you preach Christ to such persons, they don't challenge it because they have seen salt in action. It's not that we'll do our own thing. People will say, look, let's talk about... Yes, what were you discussing about? You are trying to preach the gospel to them. He's telling somebody else. What did you say? He doesn't want to listen to you because there is no salt in anything you're doing. But I declare that you will be salty by the grace of God. If you are a child of God, salt the earth. When people come out to look for solutions, who do they look for? Our sacrifices must be offered in sweet spirit. The Bible says, use sweet spices. Sweet spices. Have a sweet spirit. An attitude of sweetness. You are, you are an usher in the church. And he says, uh, come here, come. Sit down here. Sit down. You are ushering, no? Sit down. And the person says, I, I don't like this. He says, well, sit down there. If you don't like the seat, leave. <laughs> he said, no, I, I actually prefer another seat. He said, that's the only seat for you today. You will learn how to obey me. <laughs> and then you advise all the others. Look, take note of this man. He's going to sit, he's going to sit in the air throughout this service. In fact, throw him to the back of the church. <laughs> Where is the sweetness? Where is the pleasantness? This could hap be happening in your office. It could be happening in your home. You can even, some people single out one of their children. I'll tell you, you know that I'm your parent. I'll make life miserable for you. You're making life miserable for your own child. I'll make life miserable for you. Every day the child wakes up, the heart will be pounding like a train. Where is the sweetness? We must showcase a godly lifestyle. The Bible says that in our words and in our actions, we should, be, we should have salt. The word of God tells us, let your speech be with grace, seasoned with salt. Those scriptures are not just there. And then in the same Ephesians chapter 5, it says, redeeming the time. 
because the days are evil. What does it mean to resist, re redeem the time? Seize kingdom opportunities. Don't, don't just be a good friend. Seek opportunities to introduce the gospel. You know, some people, they know you as a good person. Ah, this is very good. That is a Christian. But don't forget, there is eternity. Don't forget. If that person dies today and the person is not ready, the person is going to hell. Your, your aged parents, you say, but I, I just can't preach to them. Get somebody else that can preach to them. But in the name of Jesus, ensure they are preached to. I don't, you know, I don't like, I, I don't have the grace to, to, just, to go, just go and say, okay, are you born again? Invite them to church. Invite them to map meeting. Invite them to an environment where they can hear the gospel. Invite them to a birthday party where, you will share the, where somebody will share the gospel. Give them today in his presence. And encourage them to read it. So the word of God can enter somewhere. By God means, salt that person. Don't quit until it's done. Praise the name of Jesus. I thank God for your lives. And I want to believe God that the grace to introduce people to Christ will rest mightily upon us. As you encounter this anointing today in the name of Jesus. The grace to share the gospel, the grace to be salt indeed will rest upon us. The grace to manifest by presenting this gospel with excellence. Where our gifts are salted with the art of the perfumer will rest upon each and every one of us in the name of of Jesus. And as you do that, God will bless you, advance you, increase you, multiply you, enlarge you on every side in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God created you for leadership. Leadership is not synonymous with position. Leadership is influence. You are not called to dominate people. You are called to serve them. My attention this morning is to provoke a shift in your thinking. Through the business services, I've really thought it twice that it's not good just with Thomas. You cannot become a business owner with the mentality of an employee. My reasoning ability has increased, of course, when I'm walking on the road, I'm thinking, I'm looking around me, what kind of problem is around this environment, how do I solve it? Listen, there is something that you have access to that nobody else has access to. It was from the business service. I got an information to do something that is still incubating. Very soon, it's going to come out in the public, and I have the assurance of God it's going to do well. God doesn't put anything within you that has no value. You see, people organize business trainings and business schools, this and that, here and there, but at the end of the day, all that comes down to basically the fundamental principles in the Bible, and that is what we are exposed to here, free of charge. If you want to live a rich life, create it. I recommend the business service for everyone. Make it happen. The Lord will deliver him from them all. It has to go. Stretch your hands in this direction. Declare with me every spirit of affliction. You have to go. After praying for me, I didn't feel that thing again. Since that time, Pastor prayed for me, I didn't feel that kind of pain again. Welcome back. Now, I am sure that by now you can see that your influence, wherever you stand, will make all the difference by the grace of God. I see you.
standing out wherever you stand. I see you as the head and not the tail. I see you excelling at whatever you do. I see your input in your business, in your office, your family, attracting the blessings of God to you. I see a completely different you. My prayer is that your experience will be new, just like the name of this telecast. This is what God wants for you. And receive it now in the name of Jesus. Now, last week I was so happy to present the first part of this series. And then here in this episode, we have presented the second part. But this is by no means an exhaustive teaching. So you can place an order for the comprehensive material, the entire teaching series of ruling by influence, by using the information that you have on your screen. So you can get the entire package and sit with it, listen to it, meditate on it, take notes and do your personal study to expand on what you have heard so that you can be more effective wherever you stand. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to be salt of the earth, salt in your business, salt in your family, salt in your community, salt to our nation. Your salt is so powerful and that's what God calls you. And I want to welcome you to that dimension in Jesus' mighty name. Now pray with me if you want to receive Jesus Christ into your heart because that's where it all begins. If you have no relationship with him, there really is no way you can be salt of the earth. But it begins by having a personal relationship with Christ. This short prayer will make all the difference. Say with me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new creation. I repent of my sins. I discard my past life. And I sign in with you as your child from today onwards. Thank you for accepting me. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, to advance this decision you have just made, this decision that has just made you a child of God, as simple as this prayer is, no demon in hell can stop you. You are now God's child. The name is written in the last book of life. The potential to be solved has been unleashed in you. We want to help you to advance this relationship. We want to help you to be more salty. Come and worship with us this week at the Hilltop International Christian Center. God is doing great things in the hilltop and raising people that are standing to influence the environment. Men and women like you and I, that God is transforming. I will be expecting you when you come, make your way down and tell me I saw your new experience and I honor the invitation. I will meet with you and God will bless you as we meet this week. God bless you. To order for this message, please request for the message number above. You can also request for other messages by Reverend Chris Oare when you call 084-779-290-0803-182-6714-0803-182-6712 or 0803-182-6702. For more details about Reverend Chris Oare, the Hilltop International Christian Center, and other products and programs, please visit our website www.hilltopinternational.org